So, Dan, you joined the business we're going to talk about at 19. You've achieved a major promotion and you're still only in your 20s. Um, you, In the last couple of years, your wife, Amy, has also joined the business and she's just yesterday achieved that same promotion, which is fabulous. You've got a really interesting story. And I've got to say, you guys always inspire me when I talk to you. So I'm so pleased we've got you here today. Um, but before we delve into your story, which I want to do in a moment, if that's all right with you, I just wanted to explain to the people that normally watch these lives, these, these webinars, uh, where Just Want is. Because uh, normally I'm Stuart Ritchie and Just Want Ray is normally here. Great friends, been in this business together since 2007. We've got lots of people joining us already on the on the live. Um, and Just Want was meant to be here with me interviewing you. And then a couple of days ago, I got a message from him saying, oh, we've just booked a last minute holiday. I'll check the Wi-Fi. Well, when he was away, the Wi-Fi, is, wherever he is, the Wi-Fi is pretty poor. So um, I'm just going to explain um, where he is. So this is... Oh, this is just one, basically. And for those that don't know, by the way, um, normally I'm uh, Chaz and just one is Morph when we're on stage. So this is just one currently sitting on a uh, on the edge of a pool. It doesn't look like he's actually got any uh, um, swimming trunks on. So, uh, um, yeah, I'm pleased that he's facing the other way. But, yeah, I just thought I'd explain where everybody is. And that's enough of just one for today. Brilliant. Fantastic. <laughs> so we, 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 we're we pretty relaxed on these sessions. If people have got questions, they can throw them in the comments. Um, you can see them if you click on the comments tab. So if you see them come through, um, we can always pick up on those if we get an opportunity to. But I want to start first of all. So can you tell us what drew you to network marketing and specifically utility warehouse at such a young age? Yeah, thank you, Stuart. And first of all, thank you for having me on here today. It really is a, a privilege to be invited on here um, to uh, to talk a little bit about my journey and to, to hopefully share with the listeners some information to help them as well. Um, You're welcome. So, yeah, as you say, I, I joined network marketing at a young age. So I was 19 when I got started. And at the time, I was working full time in financial services. Uh, I'd left school at 18 after doing my A-levels. Uh, and got a job. I've got a school leaver program actually working in London in financial services. But even very early into my working career, uh, literally like a year in, I always remember thinking to myself, there's got to be more to life than this. You know, this cannot be it for the next 40, 50 years. I was like, no way do people do this for this long. So I guess I was kind of looking for something without even knowing that I was looking for something without even knowing that there was a better way out there, an alternative to that monotony for the next 40 to 50 years. And, and really kind of through a chance meeting, I didn't have a clue what network marketing was. I'd never heard of it before. Um, but I I got an opportunity to see the business uh, that, that me and you are both part of. Um, I, got, I got a chance to see the opportunity and how it all works. And someone explained to me how the money works. They explained about uh, what leverage was and how it was possible to build a business where you could earn 1% of 100 people's efforts as opposed to being 100% of your own effort and how you could do a job just once and get paid over and over again. So I was introduced for the first time ever before to this idea of leverage, but also the idea of residual income. And I saw it and I just thought, that makes sense. Like, oh my gosh, that is it. That's what it, you know, that is... The more that I'd been looking for that I never knew existed, I was like, that is it. It's got to be it. So so that was it, really. Well, that's a very compelling story. And, and I know some people will have seen that, you know, that information. But then there are also a lot of people that are skeptical about network marketing. So what helped you sort of overcome that skepticism? Because I'm sure you did your research and you, you made a decision. Um, and what is it about this business that sort of really dispelled those myths for you? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I was I was initially quite sceptical. I will add that as well, because um, I, I guess I, I guess even though I was at quite a young age, you know, I had a professional job, I had a little bit of an ego. Uh, I, I, I'm not embarrassed to, to kind of admit now. And I was a little bit sceptical about the business, although I thought that it made sense 
Um, I thought, you know, surely that's too good to be true. It, that that doesn't work in reality. So mm -hmm. what reassured me for me, and I'm so glad I was open minded enough just to get all the facts for myself, is that when I looked at the company that we're part of, how I saw that it's a company that's regulated by three government bodies. You know, it's a company that's on the stock market. Uh, it's got a major celebrity ambassador and strategic alliances with major high street brands like Boots, M&S, Argos, Primark, you know, these, these industry giants who'd all partnered up with our company. So I was like, it's got to be 100% completely above board because the credibility of the company just blew me away. And it was on that basis that I decided, right, I've got to, I've got to give it a go. Um, you know, so that really reassured me. Yeah, I mean, uh, and those are things that when people start to look behind the curtain a little bit, mm. they can see those things. So if they take the time to do that research and actually look behind the curtain, they'll find all that information is there, as you said, to give them that confidence. Yeah. Now, you and Amy, both of you have progressed really quite quickly in UW terms, and you've made some great progress to a senior level in the business. What would you say to people that would like to try and uh, emulate your success yeah so uh, yeah that's a that's a great question and uh, just a couple of ideas that kind of come to mind is number one you've got to it all starts with this uh this this what i'm going to say next and that is making a decision you've got to make a decision to get serious um you may well have joined uh, a network marketing business you may be having some level of success within that but you've got to make a decision yourself that you are gonna gonna make it a priority and, and make it a serious commitment. You know, you've got to make a decision to achieve what you want to achieve. So it all starts with that for me. You know, you've got to decide. Um, but also you've then got to back that up by taking action. So nothing in, in this business, nothing in any network marketing business happens without action. You know, you can go to the events, you can do the personal development and all that kind of stuff. But you've got to be doing what we call the income producing activities on a regular basis. So every single day, what are you doing to move your business forward? Who are you speaking to today? Who are you following up with? Who are you going to show your opportunity or, or services or products to every single day? So that's really my focus. So number one, make a decision. And then number two, take the action steps that back up that decision. And, and that's got to be done consistently. Um, every day whether you like it or not and it might just take you five minutes or it might be a day where you're going to spend a couple of hours doing it but mm -hmm. that yeah. consistency for me anyway is, is definitely the most important thing and the best advice I'd give anybody listening definitely I, I completely agree with that it's funny people don't realize how much they can actually achieve with regular consistent activity oftentimes they'll think well I've only got half an hour a day what could I do in half an hour a day but you multiply that over a year and then you start building a team and they start multiplying that now that leads me into the next question which is for those that are not familiar with the uw business model because we've got existing people involved in the business already on this call we've also got people that have never heard of it before so can you tell us a bit about the model and also why it appealed to you more than perhaps a traditional business model oh that is, that is a fantastic question so um I think versus traditional business, we don't know we're born in in, in <laughs> UW, uh, like as, as UW partners, because we get to enjoy the benefits that come with owning a with owning your own business, but without the headaches. So we get the ability to work from wherever we want. Um, I'm away at the moment. I'm not at home, uh, but I can still work my business from from wherever I am in the world. Yeah. Um, we get the the flexibility to decide when we want to work. So we've got that flexibility around your schedule, but also you decide what you want to earn. And the amount of money that you earn every single month from this business, the amount that's on your commission statement, that is down to you. That is your responsibility. Um, and, and you can literally write your own check in this business. You can decide how much you want to earn by going and taking the action steps you need to achieve it. So we get those three benefits that come with owning a, a traditional business but without the, the headaches. So we don't have to deal with staff. Uh, we don't have to deal with product development, marketing. Um, we don't have really high overheads 
like conventional businesses have. I mean, it's three pounds a month in our particular business, 10 pennies a day to run your own business. You know, it's ridiculous. A day, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, you know, it's a joke, really, uh, compared to the overheads that people have with running a conventional business. But also the investment as well. You know, if you were going to start a conventional business, it would be tens of thousands of pounds as a minimum you'd need to invest. So I think there's a lot of barriers of entry for conventional business for most people. But also a lot of people in business don't have the ability to tap into to both leverage and residual income. And that's what attracted me to UW. Um, you know, I, I've done quite a bit of business networking. And, and met a lot of business owners, as I know you and, and just want uh, have as well. And a lot of people that you meet in business networking who are running traditional businesses, they are their business. So, you know, when somebody calls up their head office, it's them answering the phone. If somebody sends them an email, it's them answering it. So they don't get the same flexibility that we get because in this business, we, we have the ability to, to become irrelevant to the creation of our own income. Whereas a lot of traditional business owners, their business revolves around them. And if they stop working, their income stops as well. Um, so it's phenomenal, isn't it? What we have, it, it's, it's incredible compared to it, the traditional business. It absolutely is. And Just Want being a great example of that, just decided to take off and go on holiday with the family this week because it's the school holidays and just because he could. And he didn't ask the boss and he didn't ask, well, he probably asked Sylvia. She probably said it was okay. That's his wife. But uh, apart from that, yeah, she probably is the boss in that situation. But yeah, he, they were able to go just because they knew their business is going to run on autopilot. Now, you are you joined in your late teens, early 20s uh, in this business, and, and that must have come with some challenges. So tell us about an obstacle related to that and how you've overcome that. Oh, that's a great, that's a really, really great question. So yeah, definitely. It was it was harder starting out in this business at the age in which I joined, I believe, because, you know, at 19, I had no real contact base, no credibility. And I'm quite lacking in confidence at the time. I was well as well. I was quite introverted um, and not used to kind of speaking to people and that kind of thing, which isn't always the best combination of skills and attributes when you come to start a network marketing business. Yeah. So yeah. I had to do quite a lot of work on myself. And what I mean by that is, you know, uh, listening to audio books, reading personal development, getting to events to help me work on my mindset, but also my skill set as well. So I think for a lot of us, you know, certainly for me, the person I was when I joined UW wasn't the person I needed to be to make a success of this. But all the attributes and traits can be learned. You know, nobody, I don't, well, maybe some people, but I think very few people come into this business with all the attributes they need for success. You mm -hmm. know, we've got to be teachable and coachable. And th there's a phrase by, by a gentleman called Jim Rohn who says, rarely in life will your income exceed your level of personal development. And I think that's so true in our type of business, because if we want to grow our income or grow our business, we've got to be prepared to grow as a person to become the person we need to be to grow the business and to grow the income. So for me, really, I had to do a lot of work on myself. But the environment that we're in encourages that. It's very much one of personal growth, of personal improvement and, and personal transformation, I guess, ultimately, uh, isn't it, really? Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's interesting you mentioned uh, being coachable there. Now, yeah. I, I think the two words that usually I associate with both you and Amy are being coachable and humility, being humble. And I know you said you came into the business with a bit of an ego, but you've obviously done a lot of personal development then because you come across as an extremely humble guy. Um, you achieve great things, but you don't have that ego on show anymore. So, you know, how's that impacted your journey in UW? Because obviously you've learned those things over a period of time. And, and why are they important in network marketing? Oh, they are so important. I say it's the number one thing, uh, being coachable and teachable. And when I'm speaking to a prospective partner who's looking at getting started with us, or when I'm speaking to a new person who I might not have introduced, but they've, they've joined the team, the number one thing I look for in people is, are they coachable? Because if people are teachable and coachable and willing to follow our simple system, this will work. 
we have a simple system that will work. You know, it's guaranteed to put money in their bank account if they follow it and if they're teachable and coachable. Mm. Whereas if they're not, if they want to do it their own way, um, then in my experience, I'm not saying that it can't be done, but usually people like that have limited success because when you join anything, you know, if you if you had an apprenticeship in a specific trade or you started a new job, you know, on day one, you wouldn't walk in and say, well, no, I'm going to do it this way, would you? You know, <laughs> you'd be like, right, well, there's the door, you know. Yeah. And it, it's a little bit like that in this business. You've got to be willing to learn from the people that are making it work. So I would go as far as to say that is the number one key attribute for success, you know, being willing to, to learn. And I always think you can learn so much from anybody. So I learn sometimes from new distributors that are joining my team. Um, because they may just say something, and I think that's absolutely fantastic. I'm, I'm nicking that. Somebody the other day, a new partner, I was I congratulated her on a promotion, and she said, "I love this business because it's spare time, effort, but full time money." And I was like, "That is, I'm, I'm stealing that. That is fantastic." So, I think it's having the mindset that everybody on your journey who you meet. Can, you can learn something from and that's how I always treat everything and I treat every book like that every audio like that every event like that it's like what am I going to learn from this that, that I can kind of borrow on my own journey uh, really fabulous so talking of your journey where do you see your journey with UW taking you and uh, over the next few years and what are your goals uh, that you're currently working towards <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a great question so um so in terms of the journey, so I, I always think, you know, we're at a position in the business, which is great. Um, however, you know, my desire is to to get to the top of our marketing plan. Um, and I believe, you, you know, everybody's goals are different. Um, some people, you know, they get to a certain level of income or a certain level in the business and, and they're quite content and fulfilled by that. Whereas for me, you know, I've, I've, I've always wanted to to kind of go all the way in the business because that for me that's that's what success looks like to me in this uh, specific goals. So there's a few key people that I'm working with, and and my goals are really to help those guys achieve their goals and to help and impact as many people as possible with this opportunity because so many people right now are looking for a way of earning more money. You know, people's mortgages have gone up people's overtime might be cut, people are being made redundant, um, industry's changing. Um, there's there's a lot of people nowadays that, that go on maternity leave and start a family, but don't want to have to leave their children and go back to work. You know, mm -hmm. the demand for an opportunity, I believe, has never been higher. So so for me, really, I just want to share that with as many people as possible and, and help impact and change the, the lives of deserving people along the way. But, you know, that, that's kind of my overarching goal. And I don't think the timing's ever been better to, to do that, has it? No, absolutely. And I have complete certainty that you will be going to the top. You're well on your <laughs> way. So with your Very attitude, fun. your coachability, your work ethic, your drive, your your humility, your ability to learn. Sorry, I'm blowing smoke completely here. But, um, <laughs> you know, if somebody wanted to model success, they need to look at you and emulate that because I think you set such a great example. I'm sure there are people looking at what you've been saying today and hearing those words and they've been inspired by that and they want to get into something like this with us. Uh, so what would you say to those people? What would you recommend to them as their next steps? That's yeah, that's a great question. But firstly, thank you for those kind words. And that that does mean a lot because, you know, ever since I joined the business, I've I've always followed everything that yourself and just one have done and, and respected uh, the quality of, of content that you guys put out there and share with everybody. Uh, so Thanks. thank you for that. Um, so so for people looking at getting started, number one. I would suggest doing a, a bit of due diligence into the respective business that you're looking at um, because there's good and bad in everything. Um, and I'm sure you'll agree with that, Stuart. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and, and there is, unfortunately, um, it's a, almost a bit controversial to say, but unfortunately there are so-called opportunities in our space that, that kind of masquerade under the banner of network marketing. 
um, that, that that shouldn't. Uh, and and it's, it's a bit of a disgrace, really, because it, it kind of gives our profession a bit of a bad name. So number one is do your due diligence. Join a company that's credible. Uh, join a company that's got a long term proven track record of success where there are other people that have already achieved what it is you're looking to achieve a company that's been around that stood the test of time lots of people sometimes think that it's good to kind of get in early and join a new company that, that's in its first few years of business no it's completely the other way around that's when they run into all their their problems and most new companies fail because of two reasons that one of them is capital um they don't have enough money um, mm -hmm. from an initial investment point of view. But secondly, it comes down to the quality of the management personnel. So join a company that stood the test of time that's been around. And for me, the only way that you can have a residual or, or royalty style income as our business pays us, and that's one of the most thing, amazing things about it, is, is by joining a business that has a residual or royalty style spend uh, from a customer perspective. So if you're looking at a business that is selling products, then that may be great. The products may be fantastic. However, to earn a residual or royalty style income, your customers are going to need to reorder those products every single month. Say, for example, it's a, it's a, pro, it's a company that does weight loss products. Now, what if the products are so good that people lose weight? They're not fat anymore and don't need the products. Then what happens to the residual income then? You know, you've got to be looking for new customers. Whereas we're very fortunate in our business, you know, we get paid on essential services that are never going to go out of fashion. Every single person we know is already using and they're going to have to use for the rest of their life, whether they like it or not. So we have a true passive or residual income. So I'd look for a business that offers that. And you're going to find that in a business that is service driven, not not product led. So they're my two pieces of advice. Number one, do your due diligence, join a credible company with a proven track record. And number two, look for a business that offers a true residual income. But then number three, I don't want to contradict what, what I said in number one. Just, you know, don't don't go crazy doing your research. You don't need to know everything about a company or a business before you get started. And that's yeah. a mistake a lot of people make. You know, successful business people in any in any field have an ability to make decisions quickly. Uh, they make a decision if it's a yes or a no, and they move on and they c commit to it and follow through on that decision. So, you know, don't spend forever researching it because you could have been earning some money with us, uh, <laughs> is, is yeah. my opinion as well. I completely agree. And I've heard the expression before, you know, people talk about ready, aim, fire. And yeah. sometimes people spend so long doing, you know, if there's a bow and arrow, they'd spend so long doing the aim bit, they never actually fire. And in this business, ready, fire aim so do a little bit of research take action and get started and then learn as you go you can pick up lots of information along the way you you're a testament to that you know in the last sort of eight years that you've been involved in the business you've just talked to us about how you've learned so much about the business about the industry and about yourself over that period of time so i completely concur with what you just said dan I want to thank you. I know we've said it a couple of times on this call, but thank you so much for giving up your time, particularly as you were on a last minute break. And I really appreciate you taking 20 minutes or so out of your day to do that. Um, anybody that has been inspired by this today, then get back to whoever asked you to watch it if you're not already uh, working with us. So if it was Dan, get back to him. If it was me, get back to me. If it wasn't either of us, if somebody else has shared this with you, because I can tell this is going to be something that people are going to share and say, this is why you need to be involved, then get back to whoever that was. And uh, thank you again, Dan. Enjoy the rest of your holiday. Oh, thanks for having me on. It's an absolute pleasure and uh, really grateful to be asked. So thank you. You're welcome, mate. You're very welcome. Thank you.